Hey, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're talking about nickel alloys and how to weld them. Properties of nickel alloys. This is the third metal we've covered. We've already covered carbon steel and stainless steel. Today we're talking about things like Inkamel and Hasselloy and all kinds of other nickel alloys. To start with here, we're going to do a little quick down and dirty dog and pony show demonstration. I've got a strip of 4130 chromoly. That's the thicker one on the top. And a strip of Inconel 718, very popular nickel base alloy for use in the aerospace industry. So these are in the annealed state right now. You can see they're very soft, which means uh, they're about as soft as they can get, which means they were heated and cooled at a very controlled rate. So they're about as soft and formable as they can get, ready for fabrication or making parts and then heat treating after welding. Both of them can be strengthened through heat treat. The nickel alloy here would be strengthened through a long aging at a high temperature process, and the 4130 can be strengthened by heating and quenching and then uh, tempering to remove some brittleness. So first off, we're going to heat the Inconel 718. I'm going to get it here. I've only got a little map gas torch handy, so but I, it's hot enough to get this little thin piece of sheet metal up, bright orange, hot enough that it should harden if it's going to harden. And we'll get it up hot, and then we'll dunk it and cool it as quickly as we can in my wife's tea pitcher here. Don't tell her, please. So, heat it up, orange, orange, hot, quenched it in cold water, still soft like butter. Did not harden it. You can see also nickel alloys resist scaling. That thing got up orange hot and barely even oxidized on the, except for the side that the torch was on. That's one property of nickel alloys. They resist, resist scaling at high temperatures and resist oxidation. That's why they're often used for heating elements of ovens. Nickel and chrome, nickel, chrome, and iron, things like that are used because they can be heated and cycled many, many times, cooled, heated, cooled, heated, cooled, heated, without harming the properties and without it scaling and fatiguing. So here's the chromoly. It's a little bit bigger. I'm having trouble getting it hot enough, so I'm just going to heat up a very a smaller area, and that should help us anyway and demonstrate where it gets hard and where it doesn't. So when I've soaked it good, make sure it's hot enough for long enough. Again, I hope my wife doesn't find out. I'm just kidding. All right, so this is scaled but, but um, very stiff on the end, very, very much harder than what it was in the middle. So we're going to get it bent here, and you can see it's still soft like butter up there, and it bends all at once in one area. Down here, it's really stiff. So I'll get some pliers and see if I can bend it. And guess what? Hard and brittle. That is the concern with welding high carbon steels and low alloy steels. They will harden if you if you heat them up and they quench too quickly, they're not allowed to cool slowly enough, um, you, got, you can have some problems. This is why oftentimes uh, chromoly uh, aircraft fuselages are gas welded and or heated with a torch after they're welded. So nickel alloys like Inconel 625 are used in thrust reversers for aircraft engines, engine cases that have to hold up to a lot of stress and a lot of pressure even at high temperatures. Also, they need to be weldable because weld repairs need to be done on them to extend the life. So nickel alloys are largely very weldable. Some of them, like cast Inconel 718, are a little bit difficult. But Inconel 625 and other wrought Inconel is readily weldable, used for aircraft ducting, expansion joints, bellows joints, and also used uh, widely as filler metal for uh, other nickel base alloys like Inconel 713C for turbine blades, compressor blades, blades and vane clusters in aircraft and gas turbine and land-based engines. So Inconel 625 is probably the number one filler metal used for parts like that. Hot section parts like burner cans that operate red hot and then cool down again and go get hot again many, many cycles are made from nickel alloys like Hastelloy X. Nickel alloys need to be cleaned if they're cleaned and gas shielded properly, they'll come out nice and shiny gold, just like stainless does. If they're not, they, they'll, they'll, they'll be more scummy and scaly, milky uh, looking. But uh, if proper shielding is used, things come out pretty good. They won't come out as good as 300 series stainless steel. This was shielded properly on the backside and still a little milky looking, a lot of oxides floating around. 
for multi-pass buildup welds using Inconel 625 or other nickel alloys. It's good to keep each pass shielded with either a large cup or even welded inside a little purge box like this uh, because subsequent passes will move at a lower amperage. It's a sluggish puddle. Nickel alloys also used widely for welding cast iron and also for operations like cladding of boiler tubes. Tons and tons and tons of Inconel 625 wire are used every year to clad less corrosion and heat resistant metals like the boiler tubes are made out of to extend their life. So let's look at some welding techniques strictly for TIG welding today. Uh, this is some Inconel 718. You can see the puddle is not as distinct as 300 series stainless steel. There is milky looking crap floating around in it. Those are oxides. Inconel 718 has a little bit of aluminum content in it and with aluminum you got aluminum oxide and you have a sluggish puddle. The heat builds up quickly so you got to get in and get moving. You don't want to waste a lot of time you know going really 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 slow unless you have to or for really thin stuff or whatever. So you see the line, the oxide lines on each side of the puddle even properly shielded Inconel 718 is going to have a line kind of like a snook on it because as you can see here in this chart a lot of these Nickel alloys have some aluminum content, and some, uh, some funky stuff in there that uh, it just causes some problems when welding. All right, here's a point I'd like to make. This is 300 series stainless steel. And the technique here, if you really pay attention, is not very different than what we just used on the Inconel 718. Move the torch ahead, pause, add rod. Move the torch ahead, pause, add rod. Time and time again while keeping a, a consistent arc length and uh, torch angle, and that's what works. Here's a view of some different material. This is a, this is Chrome Molly 4130 in about 50 thousandths test plate. You can see everything looks a little different. Everything's got a little bit different look, but the technique is not very different. Move the torch, pause, add rod, move the torch, pause, add rod. Of course, you're having to feather the foot pedal and keep the puddle the right uh, amperage and all that stuff. It's a lot, it sounds a lot easier than it is, but here's, here's uh, some 15-5 stainless. It's got a little bit larger gap, so what am I doing? Going a little bit slower, adding a little bit more rod, but the, the technique it is the same. All right, so that's nickel alloys. Here's a summary of things on nickel alloys. I am not going to read all this stuff. I'll post all this on the web page. At the bottom of this vid at the YouTube video, there will be a blue hyperlink, and you can go to the web page that has this video. It will also show you some other tips for welding nickel alloys, as well as how to get a DVD with all of, 10, uh, all of 2010's uh, YouTube videos from Welding Tips and Tricks. So uh, thanks for watching again. WeldingTipsAndTricks.com